Hello and welcome to Ticket to Life. How do you like that drum set playing, huh? No, it's not me. I put that together on um, Garage Garage Band. That's how I record my podcast. And I did it in honor of my dad. He was a drummer. Um, and I miss him so much. But um, miss both my parents. Anyway, welcome to Ticket to Life. This is Henry. I'm sure you wanted to know that information, a little bit about me. And uh, if you're new to Ticket to Life, bienvenidos. Welcome to Ticket to Life. Ticket to Life is a podcast where we talk about anything and everything and then some. Uh, Today, I would like to talk about happily ever after. Do you have your happily ever after? Some of us do and some of us don't. Does it exist? Yes, I believe that it does. But first, today is actually October. This is going to throw you off when I tell you this. It's a (laughs) <laughs> it's actually, I am recording this today, and today is, I'm having to actually look at the calendar, October 29th. So, by the time you hear this on November the 14th, we will have already elected a president of the United States. And I'm sure so many of you are so excited with who, with whoever won. So this is kind of like, ooh, <laughs> you know, that's the only thing about re- pre-recording things is you get them late <laughs> when I record these. But hopefully whoever was voted in, I hope that they do a great job for our country. That's all I can say. I don't, I I hope everyone went out there and voted. And if you didn't, you really don't have any right to complain about, about how things are handled. Well, I guess you do. We all have rights to complain, but anyway, so uh, whoever is in the white house or will be in the white house and uh, we will just hope and pray that they will be guided by God's hands and God's mind and do possibly anything and everything that is great for the United States of America. And those are my thoughts on the president. Um, so anyway, it's crazy. Um, and for you new listeners, I do fantasy football. And as of <laughs> this week in October, not doing so well, but it's okay. Still having a good time uh, doing football. Love football. Don't know how many listeners we have out there that enjoy football or fantasy football, but it's a lot of fun. It's a good pastime. Um, one more thing is I hope that you caught my Halloween podcast. <laughs> it was actually released on, I, on Halloween and I included pictures of, uh, some ghosts. I believe they're ghosts on my Instagram account. And if you do believe in ghosts, you can tell me what you think about those pictures at ticket to life. Um, O two, two at gmail.com and on Instagram and Facebook and it's ticket to life. Um, zero two, two. But anyway, I'm just curious what you think about those things, those ghosts. Do you believe in ghosts? I mean, I kind of think there's some crazy spirits or something. Maybe it's just a lot of negative stuff going around. I don't know. I, I don't. My mom always used to say you should be more afraid of people who are alive than people that are dead. And that's true. I mean, if they're dead, they shouldn't be able to bother you. So anyway, I'm not sure about that. So. Um, how's everyone doing? I hope that the past week since uh, we were together, that good things have happened your uh, to you and come your way. I hope that uh, you are getting towards your happily ever after. So exactly what does that mean? A lot of people are like, oh, that's a fairy tale. Yeah, yeah, that's how most fairy tales end. They lived happily ever after. But do they? Because, you know, you never find out what happens after the first year of them getting together in in stories. And so I'm curious. But um, happily ever after means when someone, I know we all know what it means, but it means to me when you're happy and satisfied for the rest of your life. And especially if it's a in a relationship. Or maybe not in a relationship. Do you think that... Um, that people who decide, I want to be single, I love being alone. Do you think they have happily ever after just being alone? I think that some do. 
because we do have a choice to put ourselves out there and meet someone. But I think some people just, and it's not that they don't like people. Well, maybe some of them don't like people. <laughs> That's why they stay alone. But I think a lot of people would prefer to be by themselves. I mean, we all at a certain age develop where our, our little kinks and uh, some bad habits. And I think some of us don't want to change for someone else. And because don't, whatever you do, don't say, oh, we have not changed. We've been married for a hundred years and we have never changed. No, we all change. You have to change. You have to change with the times. You have to change with your age, um, mentally, uh, in your head. You probably think, I feel like I'm 18, but my body feels like it's 170. You know, because for me, that's how, well, I don't think I feel like 18 anymore. I'm feeling like maybe I'm in my... <laughs> mid twenties sometimes, uh, in my head, but physically and mentally, sometimes I'm just like, Oh my God, <laughs> I'm just thankful. I just get out of bed every single day. But a lot of people do choose to be alone and, and they are happy that way. They don't have to depend on anyone. They don't have to uh, answer to anyone. And a lot of people will say, why are you alone? I mean, I have some friends that are in their 40s and they're alone and they are happy. They then this is what they have decided they want to do for the rest of their life. They, um, but you know, you never know. Mr. or Mrs. Wright might come knocking at the door because uh, you just don't know. But one thing I want to tell to all you people who are alone, live alone, and you're happy alone, never apologize for it to anyone because you may have family members or really close friends that will start really bugging you. <laughs> like what's wrong? What, what, you know, what's wrong with you or nothing's wrong with you. You were just happy where you are in life. And that's great. I think everyone should find their own happy. Honestly, you should find your own happy before you even get into a relationship to start your new happy because it's just an emotion uh, I mean, think of it when you finally meet that certain someone and you, and you're looking for your happily ever after it is so much full of energy and it's exhausting at the same time. It really is. It's a great thing, but it can be t the, the whole dating or, or not dating or just, it's just, you know, it's a choice. But I think everyone needs to realize if you have a family member or a friend who just seems happy. Now, it could be a fake happy, but you don't know that. Be happy for them. And maybe eventually if they decide, I don't want to be, they'll put themselves out there. But don't hound people. There is nothing worse than that. So anyway, to all you people who are alone, know it's normal. And it's healthy because if you are happy with that and you're happy in your life and it makes you happy, so be it. Be happy about that because I'm happy for you. So those of you who are looking for happily ever after, just let me know. It's out there, kind of, but nothing's ever perfect. Um, what exactly does this mean to me? <laughs> well, according to all of or, or some of the Grimm's fairy tales, um, such as Rapunzel, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, The Golden Goose, Hansel and Gretel, Little Red Riding Hood, Cinderella, and uh, also Cinderella in Grimm's Fairy Tale is the Little Ash Girl. All these are have happily ever ending. Now, for you who do not know who the Brothers Grimm are, they were two brothers who wrote these fairy tales. Again. They're fairy tales, womp womp, right? Um, and a fairy tale is using a story with love, myth, and this is what it says. It's made with magic, love, mythical beings, and events that um, someone is perfect. And honestly, as I've said it before, no one is perfect. Nothing, nothing in this world is perfect. They usually include in uh, the fairy tales that we have all grown up to uh, human emotions. There's evil and goodness and courage and love and kindness. 
and sometimes cruelty. There's so much drama, right, if you think about it. I mean, but they, you, most of them live happily ever after. Um, I am talking about the relationships because, honestly, a lot of relationships do have emotions and evil and love and kindness and cruelty because they just do, which is really sad. But they do. And some people don't know how to get away from that, so they stay in that relationship. And that definitely is not your happily ever after. I mean, even with happily ever after, you're not going to have good days. If you think, oh, this is it. This is the one. Yeah, I'm not knocking it. It's going to happen, and it could happen. Or it could happen. I'm not going to say everyone's going to find the quotation marks, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Right, but it could. And when it does, you better hold on to it because it is hard to keep that. And again, it takes a lot of hard work for relationship. It takes two, not he did this and she did that. It's talking. My number one thing, if you're new to, to <laughs> Ticket to Life, is conversation. It is so stinking important in a relationship and some people forget how to communicate. I blame technology a lot on that, but um, that's just my opinion. Oh, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a guru. I'm not a therapist. I'm Henry. These are all my opinions. This is how I feel. This is how I see things. And we all see things differently. You could be listening to this and say, this lady is full of wow. <laughs> well, we won't say that on the radio, but anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm not trying to sound morbid or anything, but if, if death came knocking at your door this evening, would you answer the door if you had a choice? If you had a choice to leave this planet or to stay, knowing you will have your happily ever after in real life or after death, now, what do I mean after death? You know what I'm talking about, people? I'm talking about God. I'm talking about heaven. Now, that is truly having Christ in your life a happily ever after, in my opinion. So I know at the end of this, this journey of life, I hope that I have done, been a good person, and I will get through those pearly gates, and I hope I'm not banging on them to get in. Um, I like to listen to Father uh, Schmidt on uh, YouTube, and we listen to the Bible in a hundred year, a hundred years. <laughs> I could go and edit that, but that's too funny. Yes, in a hundred years, Bible in one year, and uh, he said something this morning, and it was, "It is best to be righteous and have a short life than to be have a long life." and not be righteous. I thought that's, that's, that's good. So if you have a short life, be sure that you're leading it right because you never know when death is going to come knocking at your door. So um, anyway, I do believe that it does, heaven exist. And just knowing that, I can say that I would be able to open the door. Would you? Would you be able to open the door if you knew that tomorrow, that like, you're going to hear Ticket to Life right now. You're listening to it. And then there's going to be a, and you say, oh, my gosh. This is my knock at the door she was talking about. There could be a stairway to heaven, and I could find my happily ever after. Or do I stick around on earth and wait for my, happily ever after with someone who I have not yet met. Hmm. So that's some th thoughts to ponder <laughs> because uh, I think that's interesting uh, because we do have a, a, a choice in life is to re lead it right because we all know right from wrong. Um, and hopefully to find that relationship that you can be with someone who is that person who will make your happily ever after on earth. But trust me, I believe there is happily ever after when we kick the bucket. 
So what do you suppose your happily ever after is? Is it having the dream job? The job that you've always wanted? And you're just happy with that. Is it being married? And having that one someone? And honestly thinking you will be happily ever after and everything will be as it is at the beginning of the relationship because honestly it's not and I'm not, and I'm honestly being honest with you any relationship that begins with the idea of happily ever after it can happen but it takes work that first year of marriage is tough it is tough especially if you didn't live together because a lot of people still don't move in together prior to um, and it is good to go to marriage counseling prior to getting married because you're going to have quirks. They're going to have quirks. And until you can connect your quirks together, <laughs> um, there's not going to be happily ever after. But again, I really believe that there is happily. I mean, am I happily ever after with my husband? Yes. Um, do we have the perfect life? No. Is there a perfect life? No. But I will tell you what my what my dream was, and it's so funny. I remember drawing a picture ah, as a child, and my dream was to, it was a house, and it had trees, and it had a swing set in the back, and to have two children, and they had little two kids, you know, running. They were probably stick, <laughs> stick figures. And I always thought I would have two boys, but I did not. God graced me with a boy and a girl. And it, it's that to me is everything. Being a mom is the best job I could have ever have asked God to give me. My kids are grown, 38, 36. And I still love them so much as the, <laughs> the day they get handed them to me in the hospital. They are such wonderful adults. And like I said to my husband, we must have done something right in life to be so blessed to have two great kids. And they still like us. That's it right there. They like us. still. <laughs> they like being around us. My daughter, who is in Kansas... I miss her so much. I realize she's been gone for uh, a little over a year, and I think we've made like eight trips <laughs> over there. <laughs> and then plus, she's been here several times. So, yes, it's very tough with my granddaughters being in another state, but my son is here with my grandson. <laughs> but tell, I'm telling you, that's my happily ever after with my husband, my two kids, my grandkids. It's the best. And those are my blessings. And I am so thankful to God for it. And I'm so thankful for my daughter-in-law and my son-in-law. Thank by the by God's grace. I mean, I'm sure they have their 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 quirks too in their marriages, but they're good people. That's all you want to do is raise good people. I mean, when you see that, I mean, that's a jo job where you just go slap your hands, sprinkle the dust off, and said, We did it and move on. <laughs> So happily ever after can mean so much to, to so many people. It can be not having a significant other and having children. It can be a married couple who chose not to have kids and be happy. It could be the person who's alone and be so happy. And then it could be just having a job. And that's their happily ever after. It could be having the home. Or you have a roof under your head. I'm happy. I got my job. I got my house. There's so many things that people consider happily ever after. So what is your happily ever after? Do you have it? Are you looking for it? If I could tell you where to find it, I would. But I can't. I think it's just um, eventually it just comes to you. Uh, and then when you get it, you need to hold on to it. Because when you find that someone or that something that makes you happy, don't forget that something can't hug back. But <laughs> just know that if that's something in your life that you just love and it makes you happy, then hold on to it. 
in a relationship, hold on to it. Hold on to it tight and work on it. I talk about, I don't know, a lot of these podcasts wind up talking about relationships. And it is just so important to have that person in your life. If you still have your parents, oh my gosh, you are so blessed. And I hope they were good people. Because some kids, unfortunately, did not have good parents. And if you didn't, I'm so sorry. But I hope that if you are kids, you can better yourself. And be that better parent that you wish your parents had been. That's a kind of a hard thing to say, but it is. And I, and I hate that. It's um, reality in life, unfortunately. And just to let you know that when you do find that happy, so that's something that just makes us <laughs> believe this is it. This is it. This is my happily ever after. Just remember sometimes reality sets in and we see the drama and we see some of the drama that that's in a fairy tale. Remember love and goodness, kind and cruelty and evil and emotions, et cetera, et cetera, can be in that happily ever after. But if it's worth working on and keeping, then you need to do that. There are so many um, great stories about how people met and they stayed together for all eternity. But then later on, you find out that it wasn't so great. It wasn't real. I mean, and that's the sad thing because some people will be miserable just so that they don't let everyone know. (laughs) Uh, I'm sorry, they will be miserable, but they don't let anyone know. They, they just put this fake show on for people. And, and that's sad because that's how they choose to finish their life. It's not. Life is short. That's why we need to enjoy each and every day of life. So anyway, I'm hoping that most of you have found your happily ever after. Um, if you've ever read any of the Grimm's fairy tales, they're a little gruesome. <laughs> Some of them are just, so luckily we're not going to worry about uh, most of those fairy tales coming true from Grimm's fairy tales. Um, There was a show and it was called Grimm. My husband and I watched it. We started watching it again. It's just really interesting show and it's about the, it's bloody and stuff. But anyway, uh, anyway, but that was a good show. But uh, again, when you find that someone or that something that you really, really, really want to keep all your life, work on it. If you think that's going to make you happy, work on it because it will be, and it can be, but everything in life takes a little work, a little action that we have to, that we do have to work on. Now I can honestly say, I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but God will actually make you happy. He can take all your worries away because when you finally realize that um, there's nothing to worry about, and I know there's there's wars going on, there's uh, sickness, there's uh, abuse, human trafficking. There there is just all sorts of crap going on in the world right now. And I know a lot of people are like, why does God let this happen? You know, you want to blame someone. You got to blame someone. Well, it's not that he lets them happen. And I don't think these things make him happy. I be- This is my belief. I believe that we all have brains of our own and emotions and minds. And we are the only ones that can get away from that bad stuff. Now, unfortunately, we can't get away from the wars going on. We just need to pray for peace. But people, that's people, when bad things happen, you know, people don't realize that this is my thing. When someone passes away, we're the ones left behind. <laughs> they found their happily ever after, hopefully, went to heaven. <laughs> but the important thing is when you do have that happily ever after, do work on it. And it is hard. Relationships are hard. Jobs are hard. It's hard to look for that. And then some people will say, I will never have it. Well, if you believe that, maybe you won't. I believe we can, you know, we're the only mindset. If we focus on doing certain things in our life, 
then I believe that they can happen. But, um, I mean, no, I don't think that me drawing a picture of a house with a swing set and two children made that happen. But that was my dream. Um, and, yeah, it is my happily ever after. And like I said, if death came knocking on my door, I guess I'd answer it and tell my husband, bye, see you later, I love you. <laughs> just, But just to know, it's not a fun, laughing matter. It, it isn't, but I realize that life is short. Don't be looking for that someone or that something that is going to make you happy unless you are ready. If you are alone and you love being alone, then so be it, like I said. If you love the relationship you're in, but of course, remember, there's going to be quirks. There's going to be downfalls. But there is time to repair them. I tell you, God therapy, God therapy 24-7, you alone, no, no, no judgment, just listening. Because guess what? He already knows what we've done. <laughs> <laughs> there's no hiding it just to let you know. But anyway, I hope this wasn't a confusing podcast. I hope it was a helpful podcast. I do have some numbers, phone numbers at the bottom of the description on each and every podcast. Um, so I hope that you can find your happily ever after. Uh, I hope that your happily ever after is a good thing. And I know we need to pray for each and every person. I do pray for you. I know I don't know you. I don't know you, but I do pray for you. I pray that things good, to, all my listeners, I pray that good things come your way, that you are healthy, that you are safe because this world is crazy and we're in it. It keeps spinning no matter what we do or say. Nothing's going to stop it. But for now, this is Henry. Most importantly, I really, really do want you to go find your blessings because we are blessed each and every day. Um, getting old is a blessing. I am 66 and I know I'm not old, but well, to some I'm old. Um, when you walk up to a counter and they said, oh, would you like the senior <laughs> citizen discount? Yes, you know, used to, you want them to ask for your ID to get a drink and now they're, now you want the discount. But anyway, this is Henry. Go find your blessings. Love your family. Love yourself. And I hope that you can find your happily ever after if you haven't found it already. Until next week, I will see you then. Thanks for listening. <laughs>